Well, hello there, everybody. We're gonna have a quiet stream today, where we're most we're basically just a a couple of decibels louder than a whisper. And today we're gonna be playing a little bit of Guild Wars 2. It's an MMO that released a few years ago, but recently had a very successful expansion, where they added a feature known as mounts. <laughs> and uh, there's currently uh, lots to do in the game because of the expansion itself. But uh, even on top of that, there's a very cool update called Halloween. Now you might know Halloween from the real world. It's a period of time where we dress up as scary ghosts, go to drunken teenage parties, and as children we go not door to door begging for sweeties from our neighbours. Some people even dress their houses up, a bit like they might at, Hall at Christmas. Though in the UK I've never really seen that happen too much. So we're going to go to a nice little intro for a second here, and it's going to take a, f a few minutes, and uh, once the intro's over, I'll be back, your host, Wooden Potatoes, and uh, we'll be playing a little bit of Halloween in the virtual world of Tyria and the Mad King Thorn. So I hope you guys enjoy. Go get yourself some coffee. See you soon. <laughs>
What's up, it's your boy, WP. Welcome, I'm gonna hit you with another stream today. How's it going? Hello, everybody. All right, I can't keep that one up for very long. <laughs> uh, hello, 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 everyone. I hope we're all doing good. Um, we're gonna be having some fun, as, as you can probably already tell, doing some Halloween stuff today. Um... <laughs> Uh, and, oh, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll take it as we can. Now, I, I'm basically going to admit to have barely played Guild Wars 2 this week. What can I say? Divinity, um, Stranger Things Season 2 came out. I'm still on a bit of a Stellaris kick. Some other minor things. But generally speaking, this has been a week where I, and it's funny because it's very quickly off the heels of Path of Fire. This is a week where I have not played much. Um, so we'll have to get in there and see how things are going. Uh, but yeah, hello everybody. Hello to everyone who uh, came and hung out in chat there during the intro. Uh, it was nice to see you all. Uh, somebody asked me a question about my favourite thing in the world. So it was Phil uh, Philomer. I never know how to say your name, dude. How do I pronounce your name? Anyway, uh, he says, my favourite thing to talk about, Twitch subscription versus Patreon. Which do you prefer? I prefer Patreon because I actually get, a, you know, well, I, you, I, I get a smaller cut from Twitch than I do from Patreon. However... Unless you're very diligent at looking at the files, like the, the the shared drives and stuff, you probably, as a user, get more benefit from Twitch. So I don't know; it's up to you, man. But for for me, my preference is Patreon. Um, what does ineptitude mean? I've always understood it to mean um, uh, I want to use the word failure. Uh, like it's basically being bad at something, but more slanted to do with being physically bad at something. Um, but I think that meaning has shifted. Like, my initial understanding of the word is, like, you know, you're cack-handed, you're clumsy, you're, you know, you, you're more likely to be inept, ineptitude, you, you're more likely to be inept at physical activities than anything else. But I think it became a fun thing to, to say to people, even for, like, intellectual jobs and capabilities as well. Um, but yeah, so that's what it means. I've always liked the word, uh, and it's probably somewhere founded on the fact one of my favourite Mesmer skills from original Guild Wars was ineptitude, uh, which punished people for attacking during, uh, through its duration. Anyway, yeah, so, uh, it was really interesting to see a dev talk about their decorating method on Reddit. Sounds like it, they wanted to do it at all the start areas too, but it wasn't enough time, considering all areas got updated for mount walls anyway. That's interesting. Uh, where's that post? I guess we can read that. I'll, I'll check Reddit Guild Wars 2 dev track, shall I? That might be quite fun. <clears throat> uh, and I appreciate I'm already scrolled quite high up. So we'll see what we got here. Also, I just tried to make some coffee and totally failed. So uh, I've just got a can of Coke today instead. Um, hold on. Let me log out of my regular Reddit account and go to my wooden potatoes account. Oh, man. Chrome is so annoying with the auto field fields sometimes. Ah. All right. There we go. That and then that. <clears throat> Guild Wars 2 dev track. Great subreddit you guys should be submitted to. Um, it'll give you all the posts they ever make. Oh, they even have it. Yeah, they have a full sub for it. That's interesting. Uh, so there was a message about the Guild Wars 2 cooking show, which people were asking about. If you guys don't remember, when Heart of Thorns came out, they had... Uh, I keep forgetting her name. The poor woman. Uh, Femme Shep. What's her name? I uh, Jennifer Hale. Uh, they had Jennifer Hale do some cooking show things, and they were they were cheesy and ridiculous, and it was like the, the start of this arena net TV thing, which I always felt was a bit off, but um, they were cool, and you know, it was nice to have them, they got pulled from YouTube though, disappeared, um, and uh, someone was wondering why uh, Regina tuned in to say that basically, apparently, they, they only were contractually allowed to have them up for one year, which is really odd, isn't that odd to you guys? It's like uh, where old world industry and TV is trying to mu uh, and, and practices of that of the industry of that nature are trying to like muscle their way in oh, the syndication and bu bullshit. Wow, I'm surprised that people have to butt heads with that. But you know that's revealing my own ignorance on things that happen on the scene. So what else is there? Message from the Mad King himself. Um. Uh, confirming that they're not doing holiday raids. Uh, 
What's this? Um, it's not so much mercil mercilessly demanding things, it, as it's we, the community, expect a minimum output of developers when it comes to communication. People do this, they demand shit of the developers, they whine about features and bugs, when all in all, we just want the devs to literally respond to, we know this is bugged, we're working on it. I disagree with this person immediately, because, um, well, I don't want to get into discussions about the failings of the known issue tracker, which did have its own issues, but I don't think... Uh, fully contradict what I was going to say. Anyway, uh, we just want recognition that at some point we don't have to deal with an elite spec being so horribly disfigured or a bug that hurts an entire playstyle for the game for almost every class. So much whinging. Uh, that's all I've ever seen from people in the Guild Wars 2 community, that they want outside out of the developers outside of their normal job of fixing the game when balance is thrown out of whack like it is nowadays. It's just communication. Not on the art threads, not on the lore threads, those are nice, but it doesn't take much to head over to a balance slash bug post that has over hundreds and hundreds of replies, therefore attention throughout the community, and just reply with, we are aware of this newly arisen bug overtune undertune that we do not want, that we did not talk about on our AMA or Q&A, and we are working on it. That's it. We don't get that, so people can Keep complaining over and over and over again. This guy, like, it's funny how he has to qualify. Oh, yeah, they don't tell us outside of the AMA or the Q&A, you know, like. I think those are signs that there is communication. Anyway, there's a response from a dev who says... This is a thing that has much more to do with the studio being a normal office and needing to function smoothly around many different teams than it does game design in general. So my hope is that an explanation might make it a little bit less frustrating. When you see employees commenting on art threads and lore threads, there's a good chance they couldn't answer your question in the balance and bug report threads. My team has a lot of the public communication, so questions from players are about their bug reports, CS tickets, profession balance, etc. I try to explain when I can that they aren't getting an answer from me, not because I don't care or because ArenaNet has an avoidance policy around the question, but because it's just not my department. Unless your question de deals with the particulars of content marketing, I probably don't know the answer, or I can't answer because commenting on an unannounced content in a comment in Twitch chat is not a done thing. Sometimes, even acknowledging a question is an answer, and any ArenaNet employee's comment will be taken back to the community as an update, and it will be speculated on. We keep an eye on what players are saying, so we can catch problems. But we're not blowing anyone off when we ask them to submit bug reports, direct them to see us for account issues, or tell them to post suggestions on the forums. Those are set up as channels to direct game issues to whoever has the power to handle them, and those staff members may or may not be comfortable posting on the forums. He ends by saying, sometimes players tell me to go find someone who does know and get an answer from them. But this is a really big studio and that's about 15 minutes of hunting for the right person and making sure it's not going to disrupt their work. Sometimes the answer to a question would require messaging to be prepared, reviewed and localized. Sometimes we can't say anything without essentially promising a time frame or divulging a lot of internal stuff. Even saying we can't comment will make some players more upset or afraid that there's a horrible reason we can't give them an explanation. You might see some some devs who do work on the things you're asking about, having co casual conversations with players, but for the reasons mentioned, they still might not be able to comment more specifically on your issue. And then the original person says, yay, thanks for responding to me, which I have some respect for them for actually doing that. And then they say, uh, I'm glad I helped. Sorry for the wall of text. It's weird to me. Do How do you guys feel about all this stuff? I wonder whether a game should get to a point where... This, like, turbulence, this kind of very, um, banal, you know, circular conversation about how communication should work again and again and again. Like, these growing pains, right? Are these growing pains? Do they go away, is my question. Do you guys think that a game handled well enough, eventually over time, the community, broadly speaking, can be in a, in a, in a, in a uh, an understanding position and not be crying for more and more communication? And it's funny because some of you might think, oh yeah, they just need to hit a certain barrier of communicating enough and then no one will complain anymore. But I wonder whether that's true. I, I sort of feel like it's shoveling snow while it's still snowing. That no matter how much they communicate, you know, if they were doing nine hour streams every day, all day, and Q&As and AMAs and blah, 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 and blah, 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 would it, you'd still have someone saying, oh, they're not communicating enough on this or that. I actually wonder whether the solution to this is just really, really well-defined black and white rules about how often communication happens and that that has hit a certain bar of, um, or, you know, a certain threshold. Like, again, because I've been playing a lot of Solaris lately and it is funny to look at that community and, um... 
Like they do a, a weekly update. Literally, they just do a weekly bo a blog post talking about what they're currently interested in with the game. And their devs post a lot on, on their, their subreddits and stuff. And they do some streams and things as well. But that community, it's very small. So it's so unfair to compare. And I've always known this, right? Um, but it's so settled. People are so settled. And I wonder what it is. Is it because they hit a certain bar that ArenaNet doesn't hit? Or is it because that studio at Paradox? Or is it that just everyone knows when to expect this thing? Um, there was a great balance thread from Nike on Reddit this week. And um, I didn't agree with everything he said, but I understood the reasoning for everything he said. And I think that's the most important thing. And, you know, you, a lot of the issues that he highlighted that I agree are issues he tackled from one direction where I think that another direction might have been healthier and so on. So I got my thoughts on that. But one thing he said at the bottom is something I've been a champion for for a long time. And that's that quarterly balance is not enough. I remember the days of monthly balance in GW1. And I don't know what that was like for the devs, but on the community's end, I remember loving that. It was amazing. I'd love to go back to uh, monthly balance. And, and Nike used the term that the game is not quarterly balance is not agile enough what a brilliant word to describe the situation we're in quarterly balance is not agile enough so i wonder whether balance is a similar thing as well where if you just hit a certain bar and people could be sure and for me that's a 30 day bar i think every can you imagine that monthly balance people would be so much less upset about broken stuff in builds and they'd be so much more lenient when stuff genuinely is broken because you know it'll be tuned out again soon so anyway uh, wow, I'm not even, I'm scrolled so high. Uh, let's see here. Inept at making coffee today. Yes, I was inept at making coffee. Jennifer Hale is awesome though, dot dot dot. Yeah, I wasn't saying she's not awesome. Well, I don't really know if she's awesome. I don't know, I'm not a fan of Jennifer Hale really. I've just seen her around and, uh, enjoyed some of the work she's been in. Um, but, uh, it was weird. It take, yeah, taking the thing off after a week. Did you know there's a gun that shoots last crystals in the Riverlands? No, and there's still a lot of POF stuff I want to do. Royal says, too much text, I lost you in the middle of the topic. That's the kind of comment that makes me interpret you as like a 10-year-old Royal. <laughs> uh, that's a very reasonable response. Balance and stuff like that is a more, of course, much harder to understand than respond to art threads. Yeah, I've always dis been sort of mildly annoyed at people say, oh, they're, they'll only comment on joke threads. I don't know. Uh, was a reasonable explanation? I think the problem was because some questions get official responses and people want answers then. Bavarista says, yeah, people will never get enough. That is true. Yeah, so to me, I, I don't even know whether... But basically, the point I'm making, the, the contribution I have on this conversation, is I wonder whether it's... It, it might not actually have very much to do with quantity of information at all. Quantity of information is comes secondary to me to understanding of when information will be delivered. Now, the counterpoint to that, though, right... And I, I fairly believe in that. But the counterpoint to that, and there's a very solid counterpoint to that. Guild Wars 2, for the past year now at least, right, has been in a situation where we, I would say, we do have pretty... No, actually, no. All right, here's the counterpoint, and then I'll counter the counterpoint. The counterpoint is this, that Guild Wars 2's had... How can you say that that will settle the community down? Because Guild Wars 2's been in that position. Guild Wars 2, we know we're going to get an AMA after each release, right? We know that there's going to be streams, uh, you know, well, we know to a very high degree of certainty that there'll be these regular streams, um, and so on and so on. So we have that black and white thing, and yet there's still turbulence. People still aren't satisfied. So that's not the answer, WP. So that's the counterpoint. Now, the counter to the counterpoint is, well, yes, we have solid, we know that we'll get an AMA, and yes, we know, here, we'll go in-game here, and yes, we know that we'll get, um, you know, a stream here, and we know this, but there's also a lot of, like, haziness in terms of, oh, are we going to get, uh, is a dev going to respond to my Reddit thread? You know, I've talked a lot about sort of the decline of Reddit as a... Uh, and I'm trying very hard not to generalize, right? This isn't a personal judgment. This is a subreddit judgment. Um, the decline of the subreddit as a place for impartial reason debate. And I've pointed in the past to a lot of that being down to developers responding on there. Because I think that one, as soon as that happens, Reddit starts to be treated as the official forum where there's all, instead of genuine discussion about merits of mechanics in the game or enthusiasm or lack of enthusiasm for the game in a vacuum, purely motivated by the discussion itself where you get really genuinely good content instead of reddit being about that which it was in the early days as soon as the devs revealed that they have a presence on reddit there's kind of an underlying um subtext to every most threads you ever see which is the op or the people in the comments are hoping a developer is reading it 
and it's either a very aggressive blunt call to action from a developer or it's kind of a subtle thing where they want the devs to see and because people know that the devs look at the reddit that that to me is a big reason for the decline of reasonable debate on reddit because what it fundamentally does okay is it causes people to exaggerate problems with the game or exaggerate their discussion points to try and make it look more appealing to address for a developer yeah so minor balance issues are declared as terrible awful balance issues because in this way hopefully a dev will see it and you know it, it basically it's, it's this outrage culture thing where you can just kick and scream enough and you can get your changes pushed through and i'm guilty of doing that everyone's guilty of doing that it's just a human but standard manipulation we do right people do that in all walks of life every time i talk about criteria i do that you know, the things I care about, I'll, I'll exaggerate you know, to some degree because of my own biases. But it becomes very overt the second that community becomes sort of a developer-facing community, I think. Uh, and so, so when we look at that, I would say that, you know, these, these growing pains we have with communities and things... Um, we, yes, we have black and white AMAs. Yes, we have black and white streams. But we don't have black and white well-defined, de oh, this is definitely going to get a response. It's hazy. You don't know whether you'll get a response. So maybe you'll get a response if you do a genuinely well-reasoned article slash post and, and prompt some real discussion. Maybe you'll get a reasoned... Uh, maybe you'll get a developer response. But maybe that chance increases if I make out like this is worse than it actually is. Or that this is better than it actually is. This goes both ways, yeah? People talking about, you know, X, Y, or Z being the best thing ever or whatever. So let's exaggerate. It becomes... Rhetoric comes into it, right? When rhetoric shouldn't be a part of it. Um, and it's because you now have an audience that you're trying to appeal to. And that audience are the developers. And, um, and because... It's not a well-defined yes or no. I already know whether my Reddit re thread will get a response or not. Because it's a chance. As soon as it becomes a game of probability, there's haziness. It's not black and white. It's grey. You don't know whether the devs will respond. That's when like this constantly gets stirred up. And you get people who make countless posts on Reddit. And they feel ignored by the devs. And then they, you know, they say that communication is terrible. Despite the fact that X, Y, and Z initiatives exist. And so on and so on and so on. So... So, yeah, let's go back to my original point. Maybe it's because they're not black and white enough about it. Maybe because people are gambling on getting developer responses on Reddit and, and the official forums as well, but Reddit's the one I use more. Maybe this is what causes, you know, that turbulence. And that's obviously bad for the game because the more, more hyperbolic and... Um, well, I don't know. This is a different discussion. Sorry, I know I'm boring a lot of you, but whatever. I find this stuff interesting. So here's another thing. What's the better community for your game? Is it the hyper... Um, super galvanized, um, aggressive, well, not, 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 don't let me say aggressive, um, passionate, let's say that. Is it that audience that will scream about how the Griffin's the best thing in the world, but also scream about how Scourge is, you know, a, an abomination on the face of the earth? Is that the better community? Or is it a community that's a giant puddle of grey the best community? And is that a dichotomy in the first place? You know? Does it have to be one or the other? I think that's what really interesting as well. Because obviously, like, <laughs> it's not a good thing for a prospective new player to go to the Guild Wars 2 subreddit and see, um, you know, all this stuff that looks supposedly terrible and looks supposed... Because, you know, it's a well-defined, it's a well-understood phenomenon now that it's like, oh, people on online talking about it don't represent the real player base. The real player base are in there having fun and you don't have to get bogged down. But, you know, I'm a consumer that if I'm going to get into something new, I try to read about it a lot. I try to do research about it a lot. And I get put off by minor things. So it, so it's not good to have, you know, a forum and, and, a, and a subreddit base and, you know, uh, prominent streamers and YouTubers and stuff as well. Like, if you think about it there, to an extent, just like I just said about me with the, the Corteria thing, you know, if all I'm ever doing is whinging and whinging and whinging, because I've got some self-interested desire to see a dev. And it's, you know, it could be all the little tiny streamers and tiny YouTubers and starting out people doing it as well. All these little things. You don't, This isn't good for a game. This doesn't help push it. It makes the game look worse than it is because everybody's so um, emboldened and, you know, uh, declaring such heavy opinions. On the other hand, is it that much better to have everyone be like, uh, you know, toe in the line and just this grey oozing mass that just... Um, 
that has no strong opinions? Isn't it a sign of a dead game? A true sign of a dead game is a game where no one has any opinions, right? Like, I believe that. I do believe that. So which is better? I don't know. Usually the answer to these things in life is both uh, worthwhile. But where, where's the balance then, you know? Sorry, this is... I know this... Should I apologize? I don't know whether I should apologize. I like, I like talking about this kind of crap. It's, it's good. Anyway. Let's go on the skimmer. Path of Fire is out. Let's see what else you guys have got to say. Um, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Sorry, guys. Hold on. Let me uh, move some stuff. Now, I think I saw a sub a second ago. So, uh, so let me read that out. EU or LMA? Uh, wow. Well, EU or NA? Uh, I think I'm on NA at the moment because one of the last things I did was recording with Boots. We did some Dead Eye videos. You should check out World of Enders. Doc, not World of Enders .com, but just World of Enders. Kyra says, I don't care if you notice this cry face. Is that to me or to a dev? <laughs> oh, I got a friggin' donation from 100% Magic Fine. Dude, thanks so much. WP, your rapper voice is horrifying. <laughs> Are you talking about the intro? Was that a rapper voice? Uh, I can't do Patreon regularly. So here's a tenor that you don't have to report on your taxes, right? I think I do. Uh, well, I do. Uh, I don't think donations are a tax exempt. Don't you have to be a charity to get tax exempt taxes? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Tax exempt? Tax, ex tax exempt uh, donations. Also, which of your elite spec weapons have you gotten? Which is your favorite? I don't have a single one, man. I don't have a single one. I'm, I'm, it's getting a bit embarrassing, isn't it, really? Adjil says, I got nothing to say, but thanks for the level headed voice in the Guild Wars 2 community. I appreciate that. If you really think I do have a level headed voice, I question that quite often. Uh, oh, Kyrus, that was a sub. He said, I don't care if you notice this. Well, I did. Thanks, dude. 13 months. Still going. We got Flying Chicken BLC, who's nipped you by one more month. 14 months. Hey, WP, always enjoy your stuff. Thanks, man. Um, yeah, welcome to the stream, guys. All right, let me go back to chat. I haven't played Guild Wars in over a year, but you're still one of my favorite YouTubers, Twitch personalities. You put so much heart and soul into your work and your story. My story? What? What's my story? Dude plays an MMO. <laughs> it's very exciting, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Um, just wanted to take a moment to tell you you're awesome. Why is everyone being so nice? Thank you, man. I could have really used that last weekend. Thank you, dude. Um, how about the counter to the counter to the counterpoint? I could probably do that. So what was my counter to the counter? My counter to the counter was that... There is, that it's not black and white. You might think it's black and white in some areas, but because it's not comprehensively black and white, um, it does no good. So that's an argument saying, maybe, maybe you maybe you tackle that with a discussion of what is realistic. Is it realistic to have a 100% um, kind of... Uh, fascist almost uh you know uh information output policy where the only places anything can ever be done is it not is that is that is that unrealistic i suppose you could tackle that with an ethics question as well is it is it is it ethical to force your developers to never talk about the product and actually have a policy at your studio saying yeah you're not allowed to talk about anything no more reddit threads no more posts no more nothing is that right i don't know uh, maybe that's a weak i would say that's a weak argument but you could take it from there it doesn't help that nearly every complaint or issue gets addressed on Reddit rather than the official forums. Yeah, that's another side to the discussion as well. Definitely. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Uh, Guild Wars 2... I never talked about this on the streams. And I should have talked about this on the streams. I'm going to make a squad while we ramble about this stuff and go into the labyrinth, guys. So if you want to come hang out. Am I appearing online? Yes, I am. Why wouldn't the squad go up? Um, I never talked about this last weekend. Guild Wars 2 Guru um, went down. Uh, or is going down. One of them. And it's amazing. I I, uh, I have an account over there. I actually posted on the account. I, I, I don't know when it happened. Like, I, I vaguely remember them doing it, and then I forgot all about it. They actually gave me a special tag on there, the Widow Potatoes tag as well, uh, which is really nice. So I can kind of go back to this. Uh, so Guild, so let's just start taking from the top. Guild Wars Secret Guru was a community discussion center and a forum for Guild Wars 2 before it came out and after it came out, but it fell off very quickly. Um, what you guys need to understand is during the GW1 days, there were no official forums. They didn't exist. The devs put that in the hands of the community. And it was presumed that that would continue on through Guild Wars 2 as well. But at some point leading into Guild Wars 2, ArenaNet decided, no, we want first party forums. Um, 
And, you know, there's a whole story we can then go into about the decline of Guild Wars 2 in the fa- uh, the Guild Wars 2 guru in the face of the Guild Wars 2 official forums and and so on and so on and so on. But I want to I want to take it back to that moment where the official forums became a thing. I, I used to post a lot on Guru. And there were a lot of people saying, no, don't worry. Don't worry, Guild Wars 2 Guru community. Don't worry. We're the third party forum. And no, we're not going to be every, the be-all and end-all. Because the devs now have their official forum and they're going to overtake us. But don't worry about it. Um, the official forums will be kind of like the bug catching net. The official forums will take all the, the crazies. Will take all of the fanaticism. Will take all of the, the nutters. And we here, we can continue to be the regular fans and we can have real discussion. And so uh, I remember hearing people say that at the time and I actually believed in that. Um, and I believed that the official forums could be the place for, you know, uh, the, the hyperbolic, ridiculous discussion. And you could have a place that existed outside of that on Guild Wars 2 Guru. Um where the real fans could talk about things, you know, and there's something very smug and arrogant and gross about just describing yourself as a real fan, but I hope you get what I mean. And that was kind of one of the pervading ideas at the time. Um, and of course, the history has spoken. Uh, Guild Wars 2 Guru died. Um, you know, I'm a content creator on this scene. I need to keep on top with what people are saying, understand whether I agree with what people are saying, understand how the game is developing. And, you know, I've got to... A part of my job, I would say is genuinely keeping an eye on Reddit, on the forums, on my comments, on, you know, the state of the community, and providing commentary and my own perspective or spin on whatever's going on, right? Like, it's important. And I really do take that very, very seriously. And yet, even myself, in my position, even as someone who once upon a time used a lot of Guild Wars 2 Guru, I uh, basically forgot it exists, essentially. And I didn't deem it worth... Now, there was never a moment where I... On some higher level of thinking, declared this to myself. It just happened naturally. But it, it got to the point where, you know, I wouldn't think about going to Guru to check what opinions are and what people think and, uh, you know, um, get a, to read the room of Guild Wars 2. I wouldn't do it. I stopped looking at it. And, you know, that was I had, I had all the incentive. I had all the reasons to do it. Part of my job uh, as an old fan of the website and so on, I barely ever went to it. And so the the forum died. Um, and I don't think it's wrong to say that that was in the face of the official forum. I don't think it's wrong to say that ArenaNet in a, in a big way kind of killed Guru. Not that they will have intended to, but they kind of did with the official forum. Um, and it's kind of funny because those discussions come back up again now because Reddit, the su- what I actually think, yes, I think the official forums contributed to it. But I actually think Reddit as well. Reddit as a format is much more fun. And Reddit as a website, just across the board, I think has probably killed a lot of small-time forums like that. And it is more of a discussion of the way that a forum thread flows rather than a Reddit thread. Forum threads do have one distinct advantage, and that's that, like, over long time frames, they can, uh, they can p- uh, promote more sort of um, persistent discussion, while uh, Reddit discussion's much more, what's the, what's the word, transitory? It's more, uh, you know, it, 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 it comes and goes, obviously. Um, but it's more readable because of, you know, the collapsing of the stuff and whatever. Anyway, that's not what really what I wanted to discuss. Um, the point is there's kind of this discussion, as, uh, again, of like, where's that line? And now it's where's the line between the official forums and Reddit? And it's funny because we don't really have, going back to that original idea, does the official forums take um, take the crazies? They're the wasp cake, right? Um, we don't really have that anymore. And I, I really don't believe we have that. Because the two main discussion centers, as far as I'm concerned, for English-speaking communities, and tell me if I'm missing one, outside of small guild websites, which, as far as I know, have always been very slow, or take to places like Discords and stuff now, or like the Twitch app, um, as far as I'm concerned, we don't really have a place, an official English-speaking place we've got outside of Reddit and uh, the official forum, and both of them are contaminated by developer interaction. And I really do use that word in all sincerity and with full force of its meaning, contaminated. It is a contamination. Obviously, I understand the perks of it, but they're both contaminated, and it shifts the discussion that you get there. We don't have a wasp cake anymore. It's really weird that Guru couldn't sort of fill that up in the later years and i don't know what what the full story is there really psychologically 
internet wise and so on like is it just the trend of the internet for forums like that to go away um too bad you can't ever make net developers ever like necro no matter what rhetoric you use well see i have a, I, you lead me into another area there i don't know i mean i i quite there's kind of this um bog standard uh opinion out there that the player base should always be listened to all feedback is good feedback you should always dilute the um uh vision of your products across large audiences and so on everyone has something meaningful to say it should all be listened to i don't know whether i and it's sort of treated as like an obvious thing and people will like smugly say oh how can a developer ever go around that i don't know whether i actually believe in that i really don't i don't know whether like products that are genuinely interesting and artistic and good at a specific thing could ever exist if you design everything by committee and not just design everything by committee but by the largest committee that exists the entire fucking human race that has an internet connection i don't know whether that, that that's actually a, a defensible position i really don't um but that's kind of side to the point i need to scroll man there's been a lot of stuff hello guataman xd Nothing wrong with being grey. Hype is just a phase and grey is just a phase. You'll always have both those kinds in the community. I think you're oversimplifying. Maybe. You skipped Destiny 2 because of all their Reddit whining? Wow, I got killed. Well, I am reading Twitch chat, so... We got owned. I should run the Healy build, right? Instead of my open world build. I finished the story on my main, by the way. Uh, and I, one of the things I want to do is get the backpack. We need to have some actual discussion about what I'm doing on Halloween in a second. Uh, you're not boring me ramblings while I watch your stream? Thanks very much. I don't know whether... I hate the word rambling. I actually hate the word rambling. Is what we've been doing today rambling? I don't think it is. It's been a meandering discussion, sure, which maybe... <laughs> sounds like what rambling is, but does not necessarily always mean it. There's kind of a part of rambling which suggests it's all meaningless. Um, me me meandering does not mean meaningless. Okay, now we're definitely rambling. It's nice that the devs post to Reddit, but I think they should keep it limited to official forums. Let Reddit be community only. It's too late now. It's too late, dude. It's over. Can you imagine how many years it would take for the community to... Well, not without some kind of official post, but an official post announcing they're moving away from Reddit for what is essentially kind of a nebulous reason would be nothing but bad press and un it would be terrible. It's, it's done. It's over. Uh, did I try any new elite specs? Yeah, I've tried lots of them. Do you think there's a gap in class balance? What do you mean a gap? Do you want to go a bit further with that? I, I warn you, I'm really not interested that much in class balance discussions at the moment. Um, this is a bit gross because I want to read Twitch chat, but this is like an, a failure right now. Uh, what else do I need to do for more of the Mad King's armor? Do I need to beat the clock tower more often? Uh, well, that guy's dead. I'm not having fun. This is ridiculous. Uh, back to the original thing about decoration. Someone was upset that... Oh, yeah, this was started with that. Crap. Someone was upset that because they thought we had less decorations this year without knowing how the system worked, the dev actually felt bad that they had uh, perception that this year's town felt less Halloween-y. Not that I think it does, but there seem to be people that thought this. Oh, okay, I understand. Yeah, Mario's got a lot of hype. I saw that... Um, Sorry, somebody asked if I'm playing other games and they said that they've been playing Mario. I haven't been playing it, but I did see that it got leaked and stuff. And I learned about a YouTuber add-on, actually. I should, As a YouTuber, I should never tell you guys about this. But there's an add-on that allows you... Seriously, if you go to your Chrome extensions or Firefox, ad, Firefox add-ons and stuff, there's an add-on that allows you to disable all recommended videos when you're browsing the website. Which, like I said, I should never encourage you to do because the chance that you'll watch one of my videos and then hopefully click one in recommended section is very high and I'm sort of reliant on that. But you can disable it fully if you want and it can help you in situations where there's big leaks. And literally, for, to put this in a Guild Wars thing, for those that don't care about Mario and can't, uh, you know, comprehend why this would be useful. Um, in uh, early this year, there was a big leak about everything really with Path of Fire. It was terrible. It was a really, really huge leak. I did a video saying, guys, I'm not going to talk about it. You know, I think that we should wait for the devs to announce it, blah, blah, blah. Um, and on the recommendeds of my video, 
were like two or three other ones from uh less i don't know let's, i'm not gonna offend i'm not gonna insult the people that did it from other youtubers who did leak it and didn't just leak it but they put it in the the the, the video title and the thumbnail and all this stuff you know the fact that mounts are a feature that was supposed to be a secret and um it got leaked and they were like mounts coming to guild wars 2 and you know all this kind of stuff and it ruined it for a lot of people um, so if there is a leak again, I will remind people about that add-on and you can install it. It disables all recommended. It can also help you if you watch like really big YouTubers and you get sick of people drawing arrows on thumbnails and doing their stupid fucking faces on the thumbnails and uh, and drawing circles and stuff like that. If that all annoys you and all, all of the all caps titled videos and stuff, you can install the add-on for that as well. So there you go. Uh, I tell you that in full knowledge that I I harm myself, but there you have it. Here, look to uh, pick it back up. Another add-on, all right. If you want to do this for me, another add-on, all right. Um, it this is like really smarmy that I'm going to tell you about right now. There's an add-on that lets you uh, basically when you watch a YouTube video, if you get like 30% of the way through it, it's an add-on that will automatically click the like button for you. So that you can support content creators you enjoy without, you know, because most, and I do this all the time. There's people I think deserve likes and I always forget to give them likes. So there's an add-on for that as well. It will only do it on videos when you watch to a certain threshold. Or you can like, I believe, black or whitelist it. So that it will only do it on certain YouTubers altogether. So what you can do is you can disable recommendeds, but uh, put that on, flag that for WP. It's basically like, it's weird and it's like really gross as a thing actually to recommend people to do. Because it's almost like botting support on the channel in a weird way. Anyway, that's totally a thing. Alright, we're going to do some giveaways. Let me just scroll down quickly, B-Boy. Um, Christ, this encounter has been ridiculous. Uh, Reddit killed Guru much more than ArenaNet, says Elsties. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think uh, Reddit is the bigger thing. But it started with... The forums, uh, the official forums. It's it's both really, I think. Um, but yeah, Reddit's a big thing. Uh, and people are saying there. I think Reddit is the official, the halfway point. Yeah, I think that's a good description. Um. Yeah, there's kind of a thing as well. Like, here's another thing. There's kind of an idea that the only this takes us back to the Reddit developer interaction thing. There's kind of a thing, and lots of developers do this now. Are they... Uh, when we talk about official stances and AMAs being hosted there and stuff, are they on the Reddit because they really care about the community? Now, on an individual developer level, I'm sure that that's true, right? I'm sure that a dev makes a raid or something, and they really want to see what people think about it, and they go, look, or they make a new fractal, or they make a better story, or whatever. They want, you know, that, I'm sure that that's happening on an individual level. But on a company, like, policy level, on a sort of uh, a higher level community manager level, why are they there? Um, there's kind of a, a, an almost conspiratorial idea that they're there for control. They're there so that they can co-opt the mods into um, not letting anything too damaging get out. So that they can kind of curtail overly negative stuff. And you see that a lot across the industry. And in fact, there's lots of uh, really fun... Uh, um, what, what's the word? Scandals? Um, and fun things that go around where where devs try to become mods on their own subreddits so that they can censor them basically and get rid of negative press and, and whatever. And uh, you know it's funny that you, you see they are quite draconian on the on the official forums, right? Uh, and they really don't let much get through, and they are very iron fisted. Uh, and I'm not sure whether I judge them for that. I sort of agree with iron fisted moderation in a lot of ways. But um, the idea is they can't control Reddit. So if you can't control Reddit, you've got to do the next best thing and at least try to engage people on their own level, which is to actually participate in the discussions and things. So it's kind of a funny thing. If they could control Reddit, would they be as open? Would it be, you know, as, as capable to have the discussion it is? Scary to think about, right? But that's, the, that's making games of today. WP defends Necro Nerfs. Dude, I literally don't even really know what's going on with Scourge. So, no, I'm not defending or advocating any nerfs. God, you look like such a salty bastard. Jesus Christ. 
All right. Uh, scrolling, 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 scrolling. What's my opinion on open world? It's all right. Um. Um. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Sorry, guys. Look at festival achievements. It will tell you what to do. Great idea. I will do that. You feel bad for talking about the leaks of Sampo? Oh, so, uh, well, let's do it then. Sam Sampo, were you one of the people, when you did it, did you have mounts in your title and did you have mounts in your thumbnail and stuff like that? Um, that would be curious. I don't remember seeing you doing it that crazy. Um, you're just jealous of face thumbnail clickbait because you can't do it yourself because you don't have a face. You're like the dude from the Justin Bieber show. Who's the dude from the Justin Bieber show? Um, and I do, I do. I openly admit, I've tried. You, you know why there's that stupid potato on my uh, thumbnails? It's to see whether it would bump viewership in any way. I don't know whether it did in the end. And now I just like the cartoon and I like to get usage out of it. But that's why I did that. So I can do it and I do do it. It's just not a real person's face. Um, what I always click on like before the video starts. Oh, thank you, man. Uh, yes, B-Boy, I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready. I'm trying to scroll. How big is Path of Fire compared to Heart of Thorns without Season 3? It depends on your metrics for judging size. All right. And then finally, we got Cossage. I'm caught up now, guys. The problem with Reddit and now on the official forums too is it's very hard to look through dev replies if they post en masse and stuff like AMAs. There's a nice feature on Reddit now. If you click the eyelid that allows you to see actual posts without having to click on each name individually, but it only shows recent posts. Interesting. I know, B-Boy. You don't have to tell me whispers two seconds after I've been reassuring you this entire time. Jesus Christ. Um... Okay, so guys, we're going to do a giveaway, and it's a pretty big giveaway, okay? Uh, and I'm going to get out of the labyrinth here because this was all pretty frustrating, really. Um, we're going to do a giveaway. Uh, it's worth about 60 gold, all right? So we're going to give away a black lion skin. The black lion skin we're going to give away is the Timekeeper Longbow skin. Timekeeper Longbow. So let's see here. Oh, weapon skins. So, obviously I don't have these. I've got the shield, apparently. Nice, I've got the shield. Must have come from a, an unlock or something. But Timekeeper Longbow here. So, we're going we're gonna to give you guys this bad boy. Wow, it does look really good, actually. Wow, doesn't that look good? That's a pretty, uh, pretty ridiculous looking longbow right there. So, if you guys want that, it looks big as well. I quite like that. It even fits my thing quite well. So if you guys want this, either for Fashion Wars 2, or if you want this for um, simply uh, selling and getting a, a ton of money, you can get it very easily on stream right here, right now. All right? So here's how it works. Uh, we haven't done one of these for a while, so I'll give you the full explanation. All you have to do is type in chat. That's all you've got to do, just one word. And as long as you've typed it once in chat, once the giveaway starts, once you hear me say it, on, on stream in a second. You just type it and you'll be in on the running. That's it. That's all you have to do. So, uh, all you have to do is type the word Weaver. W-E-A-V-E-R. And then you'll be in. So, all you have to do is type Weaver and you can win this long way. Right here on this stream. So, uh, the other component to this also is that if you are subscribed to me on Twitch you get 10 times the chance to win. So uh, so anybody who is subbed, they get that extra benefit. I don't know how many people who are subbed are here that can benefit from that. Um, uh, and yeah, so if you want that, don't forget that subbing also supports me. And you can sub for free uh, if you have Amazon Prime. If you have Amazon Prime and you give that to this stream just by clicking the button near the video player, wherever it is. If you do that, you uh, you can get your 10 times luck. It costs you nothing. It helps me out. It gives you all the other perks from being subbed, like badges and emotes and fun stuff. Everybody's happy. And you get your worth. You get 10, 10 times the chance. So, so that's how it works. And good luck, guys, on your skin. Now, festivals. Halloween. All right, so the Lunatic Wardrobe, Master of the Labyrinth, defeat all three champions in the Labyrinth. There's one of the ones I haven't beat. I haven't beat the Lich. Okay, so let's just go beat the Lich. Let's go back down and beat the Lich, shall we? 
Where does the lich spawn, guys? Do you know? I wonder. The boatman, the Bon, I don't know. Mad King Steward. There's a hero's banner there. Uh what do you guys think? Do you know where the, the lich spawns? Is it is it random? Is it in one corner? What's the what's the deal? Bottom left corner, okay. Alright, so we'll open that door down there and see if we can find it. Good job, guys. Okay, so apparently chat is dead because um, the giveaway broke. So I don't really have anything to bounce off of. I don't know. What else were we talking about? What, what else happened this week? Hmm. I'm not too sure, really. All right, there we go. People can type again now. Uh, Protoss subbed. Thanks, man. Hey, WP. I wouldn't say your discussion is rambling, but it certainly does wander a bit. Anyway, uh, almost a full year, woo. That's cool, dude. I, I can understand that. Okay, you're being asked, guys, in chat by the mod to not spam the word weaver. Yeah, someone give me something to talk about while this uh, this all messes up. Any predictions on what rewards are coming for Fractal, Relics, Pristines, Pages? Yeah, I don't, I don't know, really. Um... I think they'll continue. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, they talked about the bags, right? They talked about bags maybe being a thing that they'd like to put in there. So we got the lich here. Alright, you can now type weaver. You can now go. Uh, rambling discussions is my favourite thing WP does. When Jin... Do you mean Jim? Sterling rambles. I get frustrated, but when I ramble, it's really just talking. What's the difference between my rambling and that person's rambling? I don't really watch that person, so I don't know uh, what they're like. Yeah, but usually, usually when I when when the word rambling's used, people are like saying it in a mean way, and I don't know whether that's really fair. How's the uh, how's the legendary contest going? Good question. I saw your question earlier. Actually, I was going to answer it, and then I forgot. Um. It's going pretty good. Uh, we're still getting submissions coming in. I'm hoping... Wow, we were on one health for a second there. I'm really hoping that uh, in the upcoming uh, next few weeks um, that we'll see... Uh, that we'll see some more genuine work uh, coming out of the community there because it's right towards the end. Uh, I keep giving people ideas um, on different videos that I think could do really well. Because the whole point is to grow the scene, so anything you can do. I think on Monday's stream, I was talking quite quite strongly about someone needs to do like a really good showcase on the Griffin or something, right? Um, and, you know, what it means for the game, what the gameplay's like, and, you know, how, how that compares to other flying mounts and MMOs and stuff. People, Not enough people have done content that specifically addresses other MMO communities or like really touches on the demo in any way, in my opinion. Not enough people have done that. Not enough people have like understood. <laughs> he killed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people all at once. And I think that's a bit of a shame. Not, not to say there's not any bad submissions, but there's still a lot of untapped potential is what I'm trying to say. This guy's owning us. Let's kill that skeleton over there. Nice. I really should be running the other build, as I said earlier, but this is our last kill in the labyrinth, so whatever. Um. Like, I think there's still a lot of untapped potential, you know, to, to get people to readdress the game and look at it again. Uh, a lot of other people are just doing things that the Guild Wars community would love, right? And I know that they're great videos and lots of effort's gone into them and so on and so forth. But they're not exactly videos that grow the scene, which is one of the biggest criteria for winning, in my opinion. Oh, we just got 33,000 and Radiant Legs. Nice. Look at that. That's awesome. Oh, hell yes -um. That's very cool. I didn't even know that was coming up. So the lunatic shoulder box. Very nice. Uh, it doesn't matter which one I pick, does it? I'll just go light, I guess. Just in case. But I'm pretty sure it unlocks all of them. Oh, no, it doesn't unlock all of them. Wow. So how do I get that again later? I guess we'll just keep going with the uh, festival stuff and see. So what's next? Um, festivals. 
I guess we'll do this category because no, we'll do this category because we're doing quite well here. So impress Mad King Thorn with our obedience in a round of Ma Mad King says. So how long till that spawns? Can someone tell me in chat? Survive Mad King Thorn's tricks in the Ascent to Madness mission. Oh yeah, we have to actually do that mission. Uh, open trick or treat bags. How many total? Fifty. That's fine. Complete the race event in under two minutes. Oh, it's starting in five seconds. No. Oh, I missed the race. Rip. Well, damn. That would have been really nice. It's every one hour, apparently. Okay. Make sure to loot the chest. This one doesn't auto loot. Okay, we'll go. We'll go over there and do it. Uh, what's this? You can get one full set of armor for from the games, then you can purchase the others through recipes. Right. Okay, that makes sense. You think Mad King literally just ended? Wow, we missed the race and Mad King. Oh, it's every two hours or one hour? You get the rest from crafting, which is why you should pick medium. Uh, more cost effective. That makes sense. Uh, the Sweet FX contest is fine, and uh, that's really slowed down. Nobody's really submitting to it anymore. Uh, but uh, we're waiting for the website before I finish that up and finalize that. I can still race? Really? Yeah, but I can't sign up to the race, guys. I don't know whether that's right. Can I walk over to it? You have like four minutes to finish the race even after, after it starts. Oh, okay. So it's just early sign-ups that that was. Is that true? Okay, all right. Go talk to the guy in the middle. Oh, I see. Nice, nice, nice. All right, so what do I want to race on? Probably the Jackal, right? We missed this by just a couple of seconds, apparently, last time. So one... Two. Is this actually tuned quite hard? Oh, I love the music right now. Can you guys even hear the music very clearly? I bet the stream has been terrible. They realized they caught onto something good with the whole... Uh... Uh, with the special music during races. Raptor's still faster. Okay, yeah. That, I mean, it makes sense that if the Raptor is faster. I obviously have no way of knowing that. I think I prefer the evades. The more frequent evades on this. Uh, plus, not knowing the terrain well enough. And how much high versus low there is. I think this was the right call. Um, but it, it, just because the Raptor's faster, it doesn't mean that you can't get the achievement anyway, right? Or at least I would assume so. Race ends in 159. We're getting pretty close. Yeah, look, this Raptor's slowly outpacing me here. A couple more leaps and they'll be like well off in the distance. That was a nice evade there. <gasps> oh, okay, and there we go. There's the end. <clears throat> there we go. Lunatic Race Laser. We got it. We got it. We got it. We got it. Very nice. Okay, cool. Uh, I'd be interested in if they put a credit system where you could borrow gold from the consortium use account bound items such as credit tokens like spirit shards or obsidian shards so that people who invest more time in playing would be able to borrow more. Uh, then you have to pay the consortium back in gold with interest. Failing to do so, consortium would send bounty hunters to hunt you down like the labyrinth and horror. That's a very like sort of heavy feature there uh, and it's very weird. You like the sense of whimsy you get from Halloween and Winter's Day music tracks? Yeah, I really like the festival music in this game. <laughs> it's funny. If you use the griffin at the northern side of the maze, it randomly kicks you out. Okay, interesting. I got a whole set of the armor just casually playing without looking into the achievements, but I'm really remiss to realize that the Lunatic's Inquisition was not required for it at all. I forgot that minigame even existed. Yeah, that's a shame. So, uh, we did the Clock Tower one. We did the Labyrinth fighting. We've done the Labyrinth race. Um, so then we've got the PVE to do, right? And, and trick-or-treat bags. So trick-or-treat bags, I think, should be fine. Uh, there, we've got all of these. So I will... I will use all. Let's see how we go. There you go. Something good to eat done very quickly there. So that's that. <clears throat> Then we've got, uh, yeah, just the thing in two two hours, and we'll go do the PVE mission, I guess. Now, I think you get that as a part of this, don't you? Oh, no, are these the dailies? 
What are the rewards for doing the dailies? Trick or treat bags, trick or treat bags, trick or treat bags. So this is the new daily section, yeah? Why doesn't Shadow of the Mad King as a daily appear here? Oh no, this is Halloween daily. Ah. Okay. So that's not daily, that's just sort of... But Halloween, or oh, Halloween rituals, the dailies. That's infinite. You can get 25. So these are just repeatable achievements. Oh, I see what they've done. Okay, so this is just like play, 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 play. This is like your long-term thing. Oh, the Mad King's Gift. Personal treat from Kratos' infamous monarch. Oh, we have to do Halloween Fright on five separate dailies. Okay, so I should get on that. Let's do that right now then. Okay, so Halloween Fright is here. So, shut unlocked, complete five door events, win a costume brawl. Do I only have to do three or... Yeah, I only have to do three. Complete the clock tower, donate candy corn to Drubert. All right, that's good. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll go to Drubert first and then we will do the clock tower. And that will do our daily for the fright, the first of that. Then what we'll do is, um, I don't know, something else. Yeah, it's similar to the SAB daily system with the Kaiser weapons. Yeah, I see. I see. I see. And Winter's Day, I guess. Um, Let's see. Do Mad Mysteries for Lore. Then we'll do that. Yeah, okay, Kairos. Yeah, that's a good idea. You don't foresee Guild Wars 3 anytime soon, says Cossage. They at least need to finish the Dragon storylines. Likely locations we'll explore in the future. Alona, Farshia Peaks, Blood Legion. And possibly Count that they may even uh, take us elsewhere before the end. Definitely. I don't anticipate it being anytime soon. I reckon maybe a decade from now they could be seriously looking at it, but I don't know whether it would be a Guild Wars game. Alright, Mad King's Clock Tower. Have I seen the new glider? Uh, no, I haven't really looked. What's the new glider? Any suggestions for an underwater mount submarine jet ski? Dude, I like the idea of jet ski because as you said that, it made me think of Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped. Where you get those underwater levels where you've got the like propulsion diving system. Man, I'd love that. Uh, it's, it, or is it just the broom? Is it just the broom as a glider? Is there anything to do in the game at the moment if you don't own Path of Fire? You're looking at it, man. None of this requires Path of Fire that I'm playing right now. None of it. Uh, so, yeah. I'd get in and play some of this. Oh, what was that? Top player wins. Oh, that's the end of the round. Wow. Last call for the giveaway, guys. If you just joined, you can win a 60 gold skin. Just type the word Weaver in chat now. If you don't do it now, you'll miss out. Last call. Type that in. Um, and if you're a subscriber of mine, you get 10 times luck. So, uh, and you, you've got plenty of time to do that as well. It's just a button. If you've got Amazon Prime, it's free. It's free to be a subscriber. It's free to get your 10 times luck. It's free to help me out. It's free. Do it if you have Amazon Prime. <laughs> It's amazing how Amazon has got people to just shill so heavily their fucking stuff. And, like, not even feel bad about it. Like, I don't even feel bad. There you go. Young hand getting in on time there. Thanks, dude. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, Halloween's good. I've enjoyed it. Not that i played much. Literally, the extent of my playing mostly has been what you've seen on these streams. All right. Shit. No. Rip. Oh, I fell. I Going for that chest is so stupid. I know you can get all the chests and in time. The hardest bit of the clock tower is right at the start, I think. Literally, the first 15 seconds are the challenging bit of the clock tower, and then the rest of it, is, it goes pretty smooth. But you, you've got such fast time in at the start there. Uh, Young Hans has been watching your YouTube content for years now. Always uh, stellar content. Thanks very much, man. I really appreciate that. All right, here we go. So drum roll for the winner, guys. Um, the subs can roll their drums. Yeah, those were some very precarious jumps. I'm not good at this anymore. Uh, thanks to Ace Spooner, mids24. 
Uh, Arc Mark as well. You guys are all gods. Thank you. Damn it. Someone's actually finishing it, so we have to wait ages. Oh, damn. Somebody subbed without actually even using Prime. Thanks very much to Iriendal Yalana. I have stopped Clock Tower because I nearly broke my keyboard raging. Really? Well. Wait, the bad build video. You killed my friend in World vs. World. Did Boots kill you? What? But the bad build video was like a passive, like, ultimate medic pansy build. How could it kill anyone? Did it kill you by ringing in your ears? Was that it, maybe? Like that bit there, once you're past that bit there, the game's like, I, as far as I remember, your chance to fail. Drops off quite a lot. <gasps> Why? Oh, that's so lame. That was not dexterity based. There was nothing dexterity based about that. I literally just thought I can just walk off. I don't need to jump. That's so annoying. I just thought you could walk off of that for some reason. I thought that you would make it. It was designed such that you'd land it. And then you could maybe reduce uh, a little bit of full damage or not get in combat or something, and it was worth a check. I deemed the risk of that so low to just wander walk off. Because obviously if you jump, you get a bit of height, and then it increases the full damage or whatever. Or maybe I was hoping that I could do it in such a way that I wouldn't fall over if I... If, so it was... It was a, te it was a, stra a strategical error, that one, not a dexterity-based one. But, uh, my god. I thought you could just walk off of it. Oh, well. We'll do it again, I guess. I remember that bit there, when I was a lot worse at this, being so terrifying. See how you take full damage there. Oh, that guy went really quick. I remember them not having any collision, but he proper YOLO'd that. Alright, okay, so it's two rotations? All right, I'm pretty sure it's the next time the clock appears. I'm pretty sure. It can't be any later than that. Yeah, it is. Yay, two of us made it. Do you know what might be really fun on a stream, right? Um, it might be really cool to do that and have everyone make it to the end. I wonder if that's ever happened. It, like, nobody falls. Because you know how intense and scary that would be with all the sprites around and stuff towards the end? But okay, so that's daily. And now we need to feed Drubert as well what do you think of the path of fire music compared to the heart of thorns music um I, I i think i prefer heart of thorns i do i like a lot of the path of fire music and it's not to say you know people force me into these comparisons and then it you know obviously it's, it's a contrast that makes path of fire look bad or whatever it's not the path of fire is bad um but i think uh when i think of the rat and Ovis music uh, when I think of the various stages of Auric Basin music, like regular exploration and all the stuff that went on with the metas, um, I think I prefer the Heart of Thorns soundtrack, I really do. Uh, and then when it comes to combat music as well, uh, I think the Path of Fire combat music, 
I never had... Listen, in Heart of Thorns, I had a... It's not just about music. It's about how they use the mu music as well, right? Like, this is a really important thing. My emotion, my attachment to, these mu to this music is how it's delivered. And I have to say that in Heart of Thorns, when the Morgamoth boss battle music started triggering... That was really intense, really hype. I really loved that track, how that track was used. And it was an explosive, loud track. Path of Fire has a lot of extremely explosive, very loud, very high adrenaline, very, you know, um, uh, heavy music, combat music. But not once did I have an experience in Path of Fire that was anything like that one moment uh, with Morgamoth. I just didn't anywhere. I actually find myself, if anything, by the Path of Fire music, being kind of annoyed by it. Like small random fights suddenly exploding this huge music in. I don't know. I, d I don't think I, you know, I really... I don't think it's, it's ever... I, I've really had a great experience with the uh, Path of Fire stuff, so... Alright, what does he want? A thousand corn. Oh, I don't even have that much. There you go. Give me that. Alright. Good. So that's daily done, and we get a candy corn cookie, and we get one of the five. So back to festivals. Clock Towers champion. We get five points if we beat it again. All the way up to 25. What else we got here? Herald in training. Complete the race a third time. Uh... Kill bosses again. Uh, so we want to start the story, right? Commissioning services for the labyrinth. That's interesting. We want to start the story. Where do we start the story at this point? Do we have? Do we just go straight to the Black Citadel? Is there going to be a golden star on one of the maps? I mean, this is Guild Wars 2's problem in a nutshell. Content, meaningful content, but it's like, how do we do it? Which area of the UI do we dig through to find out where it is? Is it, I, I mean, I assume it's somewhere here. Mad mysteries. Prerequisite mad memories. Mad memories. Speak with Tassie in Lion's Arch regarding the Mad Ma Mad King's life and and blah blah blah. Okay, fine. So Tassie is here somewhere, but where exactly? Man, I kind of want it to be here right as Halloween started to see the new tech. Did it without a build? Did literally everything just pop up without even having to leave the instance? That would be really cool. There's Drew Burt's ghost, Black Lion, Lunatic Guys, Lunatic Noble. Miani is there. Got a portal to the bank. Lion Guards. Man, where is she? Bear Shaman. She's in the middle where the lion statue was. Wait, what? Where was the lion statue, though? What, at the Grand Piazza? Halloween vendor all the way down here. <clears throat> wow, so the, lots of people who won this are just not here claiming it. Please announce the winner, WP. Jaws of Doom 05? Jaws of Doom 05, are you there? Do you want to claim your, your reward? Um... Okay, there we go. Oh, there she is. I see her. Tassie. Tassie, Tassie, Tassie. Hello. Uh, it's an energy smogs aboard out there. The Priory has been mobilized since the word boo. With the Halloween on our doorstep, Kryter is positively rife with spectral spottings. I'd love to help out. Tell me how. Fantastic. Ha, right. Uh, so our scholars were on the verge of a miraculous find, the actual biography of the Mad King himself. Unfortunately, there were several key details that have been left out. That's exciting. What do you plan to do? We've co-opted a bit of archive tech that scans for very old energy. With our with our upgrades, the device now scans four categories of oldness. Winter, uh, sorry, water, gas, solids, and ether. So I used this scanner to find bits of his life story and report back. Indeed, let me toss you a bird with more information and your very own scanner. We're missing six key moments from the Mad King's life. Report back when you found them all. This is going to be fun. 
Okay, cool. So we get an item. We get some of these. We get a mail. Enclosed is your candy-powered matter meter. Uh, developed by the Dermond Priory, inspired by the College of Statics. Each meter is powered by candy corn. The elusive med, uh, material has close ties to the Cat Mad King's realm, which leaks over into Tyria at this time of year. Using a kernel as a focus, you can scan four different frequencies, aqueous, gaseous, etheric, and corporeal. There are suspicious locations on all four frequencies, and it's up to you to discover them. Try it with a little ghost standing right next to me. She's hiding behind an etheric veil, so use the etheric frequency. You'll notice on your journey that each page from the Mad King's past contains clues about how to proceed. Pay close attention to these clues, as they are the only way you'll piece together Together the past and complete our volume of mad memories we're missing six stories now get moving we only have so long before the energies of the mad realm will vanish again man i don't remember any of this this is years ago i last did this this is going to be a nightmare all right so we equip it we scan an etheric field Here's a suspicious location. We press F on it. It did nothing. Here it is again. We press F on it. It spawns a ghost. I was trying to calm my poor snow when he reared up and kicked me. I remember falling, pain, and off. He was hiding above my hay loft and he was grinning. Who is Oss? Oswald Fawn, the King's son. His brother, Ewan, is so nice and cute. My best friend, Lathiria, and I have a crush on Ewan. Who are you? I'm Serene of the noble Brady family of Crowder, and I'm 12 years old forever. I return whenever the spirit of Halloween is strong, and it's good to see everything again. What happened with the horse? My sweet mare went mad. Oz loved the prank, and he'd been feeding her hot peppers to animals to watch her suffer. When I tried to calm her, she trampled me dead. It wasn't her fault. Thanks, I'll make a record of your story. Oh, this is cool. Alright, so next. Pro tip. Hidden in a shallowed... Shadowed shallows beneath the gardens. The detrius of Lion's Arch lurks. Detritus. Hold on. Wasn't this a long, long, long time ago? Wasn't this, um... Like in a giant pool under Lion's Arch that absolutely doesn't exist anymore. Do you remember? You would walk through the sewer pipes and then you'd swim down. So, did they move it? Yay! Finally, somebody won. Congrats, guys. You could do voiceovers for transsexuals in spaghetti westerns with chords like that. Thank you. Uh, it's still in that water. What do you mean? I found reusing Mag Maguma Waste music really hurt Path of Fire. It made it feel like they cared less about the music. Oh, I don't know about that. I think it was, that was fitting. Um, and I love those tracks anyway, so I was happy to hear more of them. I get what you mean, but should two those two tracks be in just two explorable maps in the entire game? I don't know whether that's fair. Do you think they should bundle the next raid with Living World Season 4? Uh, I don't want to see another double release. If they do another double release, I'll be really upset. I don't want to see a double release. Um, I want them to do a dedicated raid release and then chill out and then do Living World Season 4 intro. Please don't do a double release. I'm going to be really sad if they do one. I feel like the old track get used way too often in Guild Wars 2. They should only use Guild Wars 1 music rarely, in my opinion, because they can kind of lose the novelty when you hear them so much, so often. What do you think? Yeah, I agree completely. It removes your nostalgia. Um, association with experience to music is really powerful. And I don't like that the the more they use Guild Wars One music in Guild Wars Two, the more they make they strip you of your nostalgia for Guild Wars One. Like if I hear pre pre searing music, I should like, you know, feel something really powerful for remembering pre searing. But the more I hear it in Guild Wars Two, the le the more that goes away. And I think that is a, it, they should do it sparsely, and they don't sadly. Um, I mean, I respect the that they do use both soundtracks together and you know they capitalize on their old music and stuff i actually think that's very efficient and that's very cool but you have to be careful not to do it too much chant double release double release double release you really want one inks 
I mean, as a fan of the game, I think maybe a double release is good. I, I'm not even convinced by that. I'm not even convinced. Just give it a seven-day gap. If you want all the hype of the two releases coming really quickly, give it a seven-day gap between the two. Don't do it all at once. Definitely as a content creator, I don't want a double release. Uh, but why should they bundle Fractal updates with Living Season releases but not Raid releases? Um... Oh my god, this entire stream, someone just pointed out our viewership, this entire stream, I was going to advertise it and I forgot to. Well, there we go, we'll, we'll advertise it now, we'll see some people coming in. Um, what was what was the question? Why is it okay to, I don't even think they should bundle fractal releases in with Living World, I don't, I don't think that's efficient, I don't think that's smart. Have them s separate those two in my opinion. Um, but I also think there's an argument that is fractals are a lot quicker to complete. And a lot more simple. Uh, and uh, more accessible and so on. I think a ra ra uh, you know, a new raid wing coming out for mediocre players such as myself. That can be, you know, easily like a hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of playtime. A lot more than a new fractal. You want to you want a double release just to see me lose my mind? That's funny. All right, so we got to go in the water, but we can't go into the water there. Beneath the gardens, there is no sewer pipe. Still, there is no way down there. Still, is there? Do you guys have any advice for me? Maybe that. No, that can't be it. I've genuinely got no idea. Gardens on the east side. None of these POIs. Oh, the Deveral De Gardens. Okay. All right. We'll try that. The wedding area. All right, Andrew. It's cool, cool, cool. The old, old LA. <clears throat> well, the old, old LA is like... We're on like new, 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 new LA. <laughs> If you actually count the number of attacks that have happened to LA, there's been a lot of those as well. Looking at the map is the west of the lobster in the water. Yeah, I mean, I think we we do some updates for SPVP2. Last PVP update was in June. Oh, yeah. Can I talk about that? I think I can. Um... All the content creators got a thing to spectate as well recently, which I kind of wanted to do a video on. Uh, yeah, see this? This tab here, live matches. So I kind of want to show that. Um, Royal says record this. Why would I record this, Royal? All right, so we want to equip this bad boy. Is it in the water? Do we just spam all of these? Yeah, Wabasaka just got it got it right. Announce both releases, announce them together, but then put them out a short interval apart. Yeah, that's perfect. I think that's really smart. I think that's the way to do it. Because uh, you know, you can't it, I think season 1 taught them that you can't do news too quickly. It's by one of the merchants, apparently. Okay. I think this release taught them... Well, hold on. So, wait, 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 wait. Let's do this intelligently. Let's go Mad Mysteries. Let's put that there. Now, this says... Shadowed Shallows. So, we've got an Aqueous Field, Gaseous, Etheric, and Corporeal. So, I guess it's the Aquatic one. So, I'm just going to try and use the Aquatic one. Near one of the merchants. And I'm going aquatic because we're near the water. Um, yeah, I think season one told them that they can't do news too quickly because people stop paying attention. But so you can do the news or less frequent news of a big double release. But then release them one into four part. I think that works. Funny question, but what do I usually have for breakfast? I don't really eat breakfast. Not breakfast foods, anyway. My skill five. 
mild readings. Energy from the Mad Realm is detected, but it's difficult to tell whether anything specific is nearby. Oh, so will this flip to strong readings? Oh, yeah, look, 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 strong readings. Strong signals from the Mad Realm are detected nearby. Scanning is recommended. Oh, and it's right here. Wow. It's on top of us. Okay, Samson. Wow. Samson is like an adult. Uh, not an adult. He's like a little Norn boy. Look at that face. I'm not being funny, but look at that face. That's uh, That's quite the face right there. Let's see. Let's see if we can demonstrate to you all. Oh, man. Come on. There it is. Look at that face. Yeah. All right. That didn't work. <laughs> uh, how do we fix this? Transform... Uh, order, <laughs> filtering, how do I reset, uh, properties, <laughs> center to screen? No, not that. What on earth? No, this is annoying. Come on, why? Oh dear. Well, we broke our overlay and everything now. All right, we're just going to play the game like this, guys. It's fine, okay? We're just going to play like this. <laughs> Hold your phones, people. All right, I'm good at this stuff. Reset transform. Jesus, that was, that's tiny. Seriously? That's not right. How have I got that that messed up? Scale resolution. Wow. Well, we'll do it that way then. All right, there we go. Oh no, he left. No, little boy, come back. Come look, come back. There we go. We fixed it. All right, guys, we're all good. Look, nothing happens. What? All right, we're gonna do another giveaway. Um. Okay, so the next giveaway, guys, is going to end. Well, well, let me speak to this kid first. And B-Boy, I swear to God, if you start whinging, I've already told you I can see it. Just wait for me to finish speaking to this NPC. All right, here we go. Um, me, Oz, and Ewan had a secret hiding place down here, but I used to train with the Thorn Brothers. I like Ewan best, but Oz could be funny sometimes. If only he hadn't fled that day in the sewers. What happened? Ewan was sick, so Oz and I went looking for trouble. Just the two of us. It was fun until a giant worm latched onto me, and Oz didn't even draw his sword. He just ran. Thanks for your story. I'll make a record of it. All right, there we go. Okay, good. Okay, now. Um, so, yeah, we're going to do another giveaway. This one's going to be a War Gods uh, Dagger. So another big, nice, juicy black line skin for you guys. Hopefully you enjoy it. And um, <laughs> Ink says that face is based on me. What's wrong with his face? He just looks like a little boy. That's all. A chubby boy. And I found it fun. He looked different to um, what most of the NPCs in the game look like. All right. So it's going to be the same as before. And it's going to be um, a keyword giveaway. It's going to end exactly five minutes after the keyword is given. All right. So when he gives the keyword, uh, I'll read it out loud and then we'll do it. We're just waiting for him now. All right. So. <laughs> Inks is a chubby boy confirmed question mark. Yeah, that's kind of rude what I just said there, isn't it? <clears throat> Guild Wars 2 doesn't have dark stories. He said Guild Wars 2 is family friendly. He said, who's he? Me? I haven't said that for a long time. In fact, I don't know whether I've ever fully said that. Still waiting for B-Boy to respond. He might have gone AFK. You believe the kid's face was based from on Roy from Ash Kappa? Well. Thanks, you brought me back to Guild Wars 2. That's cool, dude. Alright, alright, alright. Let's keep going. Since B-Boy's not around. Um, search the dead streets and forgotten thoroughfares of another Lion's Arch. 
in which Oz woos Lady Lyrissa with gracious verve and uncomfortable silences. The dead streets and forgotten thoroughfares of another lion's arch. Does the environmental weapon work under water? So are we talking about old LA down there? I'll try old LA. Keywords are getting harder to think of. What? <laughs> it could be literally anything, couldn't it? All right, the keyword, guys. Five minutes after I say this, it's going to end. So you ready? Keyword is spellbreaker. Spellbreaker. All right, so there you go, guys. WP, do you have any thoughts in hindsight of Moe's time as games direc director? Yeah, I've got thoughts. Um, I think he did a good enough job. Uh, I don't actually think it matters that much. Um, I think that he... Uh, I think Colin got an unfairly bad rap. Uh, I think that Mo got an unfairly high amount of kudos... I think a lot of the work that was probably in place before Mo became game director was attributed to him when it was not actually necessarily, you know, like I remember when Mo came in, literally the next week there were people saying, oh, he's so much better. Look at all this amazing content he's made. Yeah, really. He made that in one week, right? It all came from Mo himself. The second he became game director, uh, or everything that happened. And, you know, it's just obscene. It's just, when you realise, like, the quality of discussion that usually comes out of it. So those are some thoughts I've got. Um, they're not particularly nice thoughts. I'm at the Breach Maker. I don't know why I'm at the Breach Maker. I'm going to Old LA. Mordry's just stuck in my head, I guess. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, though. I think uh, it's been good. I think that he has presided over one of the strongest times for this franchise. Um, and I don't know whether that I would attribute that all to him. I think that's ridiculous. Um... But, you know, there's something to be said in that. Here we go. I just luckily used the right type of field there. The gaseous field. My poor lady. My poor lady. She may as well have died the moment that monster set eyes upon her. He said it was love. But I said it was jealousy. He only wanted her because she loved his brother. What happened? Prince Thorn the Younger cornered my lady Li Lyrissa. In a dark alcove and tried to force her to play Prince Oswald says. She slapped him, of course. And when he made to retaliate, I put myself between them. So did he hurt you? Not in front of my lady, no. But soon after, yes. He chased me one night into an alley and he beat the life from me. Wow, thank you for your story. I'll make a record of it. Very grim indeed. All right, so in which Oz and his elder brother Yui get into a sticky situation, only one of them will return. So we need to say more now and look more where Kreiter's descendants are buried. Say more now. I don't know what the say more now bit is, but we're going to a graveyard, obviously. Um... <laughs> this voice makes me want to costume potatoes. She's a sad, you know, macabre, echoing spirit of the distant past. What do you want? That's a perfect voice for that, man. Is it all in Lion's Arch? The other three have been in LA, so I'm a bit lost now. Seymour equals Shamor. So the Shamor graveyard. I think I remember one being in the Shamor graveyard. I like that as a cryptic. All right, let's go to let's go to Shamor. I'm confused. How are you figuring this out? Uh, well, the last one I just got lucky with. Did I know I can keep mind bounce? Really? You mean like this? Oh, yeah, baby. Mmm. Nothing like mounted Mad King hunting. They're all just in cryo. Yeah, I remember it being more of a world tour before, but I didn't know whether they changed it or whether, like, the first part of the achievement was purely Lion's Arch and then there were other parts, which is what I was remembering from years past. Rev skins? Yeah, where are they? I know. All right.
What kind of thing would it be here? We've already done gaseous. We've already done aqueous. So an etheric field. Let's try an etheric field. Um, it says there's a strong readings here. So what we want to do is scan. That mechanic where it turns it off if you've been scanning too much is like super lame. I think that's a lot more fiddly than if they just put a cooldown on these. So because a mentor stood here, I'm guessing it's over here. Let's try the etheric field. Didn't work. The corporeal field. Didn't work. Didn't work. Didn't work. None of these worked. I'm disappointed. Sun. I guess I'll get that carving pumpkin over there as well, because why not? <clears throat> yeah, the inventory cutter is pretty insane, isn't it? It's pretty good. It's my next little subtle method of trolling people, which I took great pleasure in using the on-screen keyboard, which somebody recommended on a stream. So, um, so strong readings. Oh, he is over here. What? All right. Hello, you and Thorn. The Halloween energy is strong this year. It's good to return to this world to see what new havoc my brother has wrought. They say he was treacherous, but I never believed him. He set me up. He tricked me into the web of a giant spider, and once I was gone from the world, he became heir to the throne. All I wanted to do was protect him, but he took everything I ever held dear. Thanks, I'll make record of your story. Cool. Next. Go into the hills and set down black roots and stagnant waters. Well, I know black black gut rot or whatever is over here. So black root cut. There we go. So we'll go there. Possibly in Draythor's lab. Uh, congratulations to the winner. About to be announced. Lemony8 says, specifically, what do you think about Moe's communication? I feel like the two to three months thing has brought a real sense of stability that's been really great for the game and the community. It's interesting you say that, Lemony, because we kind of had a discussion at the start of the stream, which I'm guessing you might have missed, or maybe you were there. Um... I don't know whether the community genuinely... I mean, I know I personally do believe that the AMAs on big releases and... Well, specifically those, but also some other minor things. I do personally believe that we get more than enough information. Um, and I think it's pretty good. And I think we've had a good time for communication and so on. I think it's been all right. Um... But uh, does does the community feel more settled? Is there a less per per a lower percentage of like salty people who are angry that they're not being communicated to enough and so on? Um, I don't know whether that's true. I don't know whether there really is any difference, which is kind of what prompted us into the whole chat earlier. So on that. Can we say there's really been a big difference with Mo? I don't know. Plus, also, I see a lot of contradictory stuff. I see stuff like... Um... Oh, when Colin was running it, there were too many promises that they never that they never lived up to. And there was too much, you know, speculation about features rather than natural delivered features and stuff. And, you know, I think if there's any real difference, maybe that's the bigger one. In terms of, like, quantity of communication, is there really a big difference? I don't know whether it's easy to find. I don't, I don't know if I have any particular... Beyond the introduction of those AMAs, how much has really changed? I think they're still fairly speculative about upcoming stuff. Maybe that's just me. So somebody just won, apparently. So congratulations to whoever that was. Totally rigged, apparently. Try looking around the island. I basically, I'm just wandering around waiting for the strong readings now. I mean, there's another mentor here, so... In fact, I can see. Why is this not strong readings? Why is this mild readings while we're standing right next to the goddamn NPC? It's a bit ludicrous. Anyway, thank you to the next mentor. These apples, they're helping it out. Oh, whoa. I fell for Oswald's sweet words. I said I could continue Ewan's work once I was queen, but once after we were married, he was changed, and I had to get away from him. What happened? Oswald had become cruel, though I planned a summer in the country, visiting my sister. I was en route when the brigands attached, uh, attacked us. As I breathed my last, I heard them laughing about their double payoff, my jewels and the gold the king had paid them to assassinate me. Oh dear. And la uh, lastly, we've got Mad Memories 6 Coronation, in which his royal madness ascends the crying throne and wields his first decree. 
So we're going to find Provenic, where the first king's bones rot in the hills. So the Provenic Crypt is a place in Gindaran, so I'm guessing it's there. And I also have a vague memory of going there. Am <laughs> I voice acting Mike Tyson? Dude, I would never say anything mean about Mike Tyson. I'd be scared of getting uh, wholly dismantled. I accidentally did this along with a few other players playing in the same order, so I had an easier time finding them. WP is Mr. ArenaNet, so he does all the voice acting in the game, ranging from Timey to Admiral Tyder Covington. Gotta say, WP has some mad wide range. Thanks, man. I appreciate, you know, that's what I do this for, you know, for all the kudos. All those sweet, sweet kudosies. Oh, look how much mounts have broken the game. I can just fly over these traps. This is such crap, man. Look at this. This is not a legitimate experience. Look at all the effort that once upon a time went into this. And the door's already open and everything. Gross. I'm guessing that the ghost is going to be in here. I don't know. But it would make sense to have him at the end. Yeah, it looks like it. There it is. Suspicious thing. It was the first one. Hello. Okay, so we got Lord Humphrey Farron with no head. That's one of the goriest things that Guild Wars has, isn't it? Look at that. That's quite gory. Give me something in the game that's m less gory than that. More go gory than that, sorry. I am forever tied to Lord Prince Oswald by bitter cords that wear upon my soul. And I promise you one day he will pay for his crimes against Crider. I tried once. I tried to bring him to justice and I failed. Okay, what happened, bro? I was out of my head with rage on the day of his coronation. I knew he'd murdered his father and I publicly accused him before the ceremony. He had put me into shackles and he what made me watch as I was crowned. As he was crowned, sorry. What did he do then? He made me his first royal decree, proclaiming that all traitors he punished without delay. He named me a traitor, and he cut my head off on the spot. All right, thanks, man. I'll make a record of your story. Oh, snap! Okay, someone in chat just said, Goldstab. Goldstab in chat just said, Farron has LSP voice, okay? Now, a lot of you guys watching me right now will not know what LSP is. LSP is this horrendous gross sounding character with an infuriating voice from a silly kids cartoon called Adventure Time, okay? LSP stands for Lumpy Space Princess. LSP is also happens to be voiced by a guy called Pendleton Ward, who is sort of the executive producer or creator of the show or whatever, right? So he's got like this horrible voice. It's one of the most annoying voices I've ever heard in any media ever, right? Um, and it's funny because it's from the creator of the show, blah, blah. Um... I was legitimately trying. I was thinking, what's another accent I can do here, right? And I leg and I thought LSP. I was legitimately trying to sound like LSP there. I was actually going for that voice, and someone in chat recognized it. I that actually, beyond anything else, that actually makes me smile. Wow. That's cool, dude. That you actually knew I was going for LSP. That blows my mind. Silly kids cartoon, those are fine words. It is a silly kids cartoon. It's got elements that you can enjoy as an adult, but it's a silly kids cartoon, and I think you're a fool to say otherwise. And this comes from someone who just marathoned the entire show within the past month or so, and enjoyed very much of it, and, and I see why people like it, and they're fanatical about it and stuff, but it is still a silly, a silly kids cartoon. Anyway, so what's this? Flag wanted me to, but what about you? Do you want to give away the strange rock? Uh, no, let's do that on another stream. Two, we've already done more than enough. There's no point doing tons of stuff on this stream. Uh, let's do that on another one. Yeah, you can be a well-adjusted adult man and love the show. I would describe myself as a well-enough well, well enough adjusted adult man, and I like the show as well, but it's still a kid's show, all right? You don't have to take offense to that. Yeah, there you go. It's a kid's cartoon. We're in agreement. Anyway, um, cool. So we've got Mad Memories. Nice. Look at all that flavor text. A recollection of the life and deeds of Mad King Thorn as recounted by his loyal subjects and friends. The volume ends with a coronation of King Thorn. It seems incomplete. Stories yet untold despite the tower. Uh, sorry. Stories yet untold despite the tower that marks a spooky sp site. When humans flee their home of old where they settle cannot be told. Oh, it's, it's, a, it's a poem. 
Um, so what do we do with this now? Do we take this back to Tassie and, and go from there? Don't get WP talking about My Little Pony. Yeah, that's sort of a similar situation, right? Where uh, it's a kid's show, but um, people outside of its initial demographic uh, took to it. I can't say I've ever watched a single episode of My Little Pony, though. Oh, as far as I understand, why people like it is because it was like the golden age of Cartoon Network after it had passed. So, like, if you liked Cow and Chicken and you liked Powerpuff Girls and you liked... You know, th those kind of late 90s, early 2000s Cartoon Network things. All those kind of style TV shows went away. Um, but they were sort of brought back in some respect with My Little Pony. And that's why people like I think, anyway. I think. I don't know. Obviously, there's all the joking, stupid dipshit stuff about it as well. Where, you know, they're all nutters and so on. But I think at its core, that's why people like it. But again, I don't know. Um, okay, so we want to speak to Tassie over here. The most gory thing next to that headless ghost is your inventory. Easing. How are you faring? Have you found the forgotten chapters? Remind me what I need to do. I'm certainly familiar with how to scan. Remember, examine clues to proceed. Okay, so we go to our achievements again. Uh, they're like this is but I loathe this. This is not the way to give people quests and things. It's so fiddly and ugh. Uh, track down first accounts of Mad King Thorn's rules during Halloween when the Mad King dra Mad Realm draws near. All right, stories yet. Oh, okay. A tower on a spooky site when humans flee their home of old. Where they settle cannot be told. So this is a clue. Uh, so stories yet untold, despite the tower that marks a spooky site. So we're looking for a tower um, in a location. So are we talking about the Ascalonians leaving their home, or are we talking about uh, Orians? No, no. What? There's no story really of Orians fleeing. They got nuked. So it's probably not the Vizier's Tower because I'm thinking tower or. Is it the, the Ascalon Tower at the Faux Fire, maybe, where that happened? But, mm. Adventure Time is mostly... I'm looking reading the chat, sorry. Adventure Time is mostly interesting as a case study in continuity. And, um... Continuity with such a weird, surreal, odd show. Like, I don't know. I could talk a lot about it, but I, I feel like being wooden potatoes, I'm supposed to be talking about Guild Wars instead. Uh, I don't know about the quality of communication, but when Mo says something is coming, there's a certain amount of trust, I think, that has been valuable. If you look back at pre-purchase controversy, a lot of it stemmed from a lack of trust. Um... Yeah, I think you're right. I don't know whether that trust's really been built up too much. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. This event in 2012 had a lot of new players. I think the back beast was in low-level zones. Wow, I've really got people talking about TV shows there. That's surprising to me. All right. Uh... They're all in Kryter with the previous tier, right? So let's say that they're all in Kryter here as well. A tower in Kryter. The Wizard's Tower? Yeah, so Royal just said in chat the Ascon Settlement, which I've been thinking about as well, but there's no tower in the Ascon Settlement. Oh, I think I do remember a thing up with the ghosts here, though. But what's this about a tower? Besides, this is where they fled to, not where they fled from. I suppose the hint says, uh, who knows where they'll arrive. So the idea is we're supposed to be thinking about where they'll arrive rather than where they left. Adventure Time's continuity is fascinating. Do you think they had it all thought out from the beginning, WP? No, I don't. I don't think they had it all thought out, thought out from the beginning. I think that, um, it fascinates me to see, uh, 
it, it feels like they were absolutely flippant and just did not care about anything they wrote about, no matter how surreal or abstract or uh, unjustifiable or ill-founded in reality any story they ever did. And they, they, they allowed themselves, and they continue to, even into the later series, that fundamental position of just doing whatever they want. And then they l chain themselves to it. And what's fascinating about it is how they chain themselves to it later. And they make it meaningful. And they make it mean, mean stuff. You know, I could pick out a lot of my favorite episodes. And some of them are like bottle episodes where it just sort of shows the humor and the whimsy and sort of the, uh, the, the emotion that's in the show. And then other times you can like look at, you can spotlight episodes that really highlight the continuity and how mad it gets. There's an episode. I'm sorry, I won't talk about this too much because I know people are going to be clicking the X. Um, there's an episode though, where, which I think it really is the epitome of, uh, sorry, is, is the, the, the best they've done and like the prime of, of this weird writing style that they seem to got is the episode where Betty becomes magic and the magic man becomes normal and then decides to go to Mars or whatever. Like when you watch that episode as a fan of the show who's seen all of the other stuff, what you're watching is insane. And it's so disjointed and it's so ridiculous and none of it makes any sense. It's all so stupid. And if it's a plot that just to describe to any normal person sounds so stupid. Like people just heard it there. What the fuck is he talking about? Mars and all this nonsense, right? And Abraham Lincoln on Mars and all this crap. It's just insane. It's so stupid. But what's beautiful about that episode though is all this totally arbitrary, obnoxious, dumb stuff it's actually all a story and it act you know they've remembered weird things and glob and it, it, it's so and i think that there's there's some real artistry in that and there's something very fascinating about looking at that as an adult who's into media and constructed media and how they do that kind of stuff and that that it's really really interesting and so you know that's a great episode to look at i think and then there's other stuff about hints and uh all kinds of there's there's lots of layers to it to, to, that clearly has created like a fanatical audience around it. Um, but yeah. And unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to give you any really decent discussion on that show in a quick sound bite as I'm forced to sort of discuss other things around it. I am no one, an innocent, the source, the son of a merchant, falsely accused and punished by the king. What happened, man? Uh, during the famine, some folks were thieving to, sit, to feed their families. Uh, the king called for a roundup of anyone suspected of stealing. Not all were guilty, but he made an example of us by cutting off both of our hands. Thanks, I'll make a record of your story. Okay, good. Uh, this hinterland village was home to a goddess and a martyr. So the martyr would be Saul, Hinterland, Harathi Hinterlands. We know that we've got um, the ru ru ruins of Holy Demetra, which was a town. It's a ruin. Uh, there was no goddess that was here, but there is a god statue in the martyr's tomb, so I'm guessing it's here. Inktide says your Halloween is the real spook this Halloween. Your inventory, sorry. Did I just say your Halloween is the real spook this Halloween? Weird. Have I played Little Pink Best Buds? No, I don't even know what that is. I asked a silly question about whether my own family watches my Twitch stream last week, and your response caused me to become a Twitch affiliate. What? What? I remember that, that uh, Ben. What are you talking about? Do you want to give me the full story there? That sounds really cool. How, what's the through line there? Um... Sort of reminds me of the fan trailer for Silvari's story of Guild Wars 2 called King. Which requires multiple viewing to understand the story, but it's very touching for anyone who's played through Savari's story to all. I'm not sure I know what you're talking about there. That sounds interesting. What do you think uh, about the way ArenaNet marketed mount skins? Only bundles. Oh, uh, they never sold them individually, but forced you to buy a full package. Uh, we only have one bundle so far, so I don't know whether I can really form any strong opinions about that yet. Because who knows, in the future they might do... Um uh, you know, uh, a, a, another version. I need more candy to power this device. Crap. It takes candy corn to power the device. Well, we could open more trick-or-treat bags. Let's salvage some stuff, shall we? See, it doesn't even get, get me that much. Let's type consumables. Um, this Halloween stuff's just going to flood back in, so there's no point. I'm going to keep going with light. I know somebody recommended medium, but I'm 
going to keep going with light there. That achievement chest is going to spam my stuff out even more. So we'll just do that. We'll drop that. We'll get rid of that. We'll consume that. Winter's Day gifts we'll get rid of. I guess that's from my um, uh, thing. Uh, splendid chest. We'll get that and that. That's from daily. Two jugs of liquid karma. We'll use the... No, the finishes are going to come back in. So there's no point. The bag of masterwork gear we can free up. Uh, what else is double clickable? Uh, uh, there's probably enough right there. Right. And now we'll go to the, the trick or treat bags. We'll use all to get a ton of candy corn in. There we go. Beautiful. Man, I remember having to run double click macros and stuff for that years ago. And now look at how easy it is to just dig through those stacks. Um, okay, cool. Now what we do is we go back to this and we've got some candy. And it says we've got strong readings. Uh, I wonder if it's in the secret area next to the Duena statue. I understand now why they make you drop it and stuff. Because, um... They, uh... Oh, these guys are actually speaking. It's been days. It's so little. Hello. After a drought killed our crops, we begged King Thorn to lower taxes so we could buy food, and he just laughed it off and told us to go eat candy corn. Sorry, dude. Uh, Adjil said, I cannot wait for the end of the contest. WP has been so tight-lipped about his opinions on different videos. Some uh, videos are so fascinating. Yeah, it's been horrible. It's actually been horrible. I wish I could talk more about the different videos that I've been interested in and seen and stuff. Um, I'm also kind of dreading it because... I mean... I I might literally go online on the record and say, guys, I'm taking a week off. And the reason I'm taking a week off is because all week I'm going to be watching YouTube videos about Guild Wars 2 and drinking coffee and eating donuts and uh, and basically just trying to figure out which ones are the best ones. And it's going to take me hours and hours and hours and I'm just going to take the week off to do it. I genuinely think that would give me some peace of mind, but it's kind of ridiculous. Little Pink Best Buds is a very short game by Pendleton. Oh, it's quite bizarre. You might like it. Again, I don't really like Adventure Time that much. Um, it's I like aspects of it very much, but mostly, again, it's like I don't know whether I like it just because it's weird. It's how they bind themselves to the weirdness that I, I appreciate. So weird for weird's sake, I don't really care. I'm sort of not that interested in it. Uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll think about it for sure. These old bones are caught in the gullet where laughing rises from sorrow. The gullet. Where laughing rises from sorrow. Hmm. You know, they could have updated it and did, put something in Lake Doric this year. Because that's still quieter. The gullet. What gullet? Where laughing rises from sorrow. Man, I really don't know. Benji says because everyone has Lake Doric. Wow, you typed that very sarcastically there. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Maybe because um, people don't have it. But then what's so bad about that, you know? Encourage people to pick up a Living World episode. It's not deleted from the game. It's not impossible to get. Heaven, forgive them forever reminding people old maps exist and maybe get them to pick it up. Blood Tide Coast on the debris. Oh, yeah, because Blood Tide is still quieter as well. I actually remember um, in Sparkfly, we go, to, we go to the Shattered Keep at one point. I remember that. The gullets on the debris. What debris? Oh, is it the really deep thing here? Isn't there like... There's a deep pit, right? Quite far south down here. The mournful depths. I vaguely remember maybe something was down there. Laughing Gull Island, you think? Oh, yeah, because laughing. Yeah. 
Covington keep. All right, we'll go to Laughing Girl. Yeah, Skimmer is really nice to cruise around on Blood Tide. Yeah, definitely. I had a lot of fun doing that before and did a video about it. Uh, I like these type of quests because they get you to go to odd areas of the world. They did it in current events too. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what uh, uh, current events are best at, actually. All right. These old bones are caught in the gullet where laughing rises from sorrow. Perhaps it's in the base of the keep then? Let's see. Hey, at least navigating this island's a lot more comfortable now with mounts. Or not. I guess they put an invisible wall up there. Oh, and then they TP you out as well. Alright, well, you can at least still shortcut like so. It's on the ghost of the shipwreck. There's a shipwreck and there's a ghost, apparently. Mentor tag spotted on map. I wonder where it is. Hmm, yeah. Alright, and he's on a ship, so I guess we'll go over there. Very reliant on these mentors. I thought this guy was called a spear marshal there. I was like, what the hell? He's a sea marshal. Alright, hello. Hello. He was one prickly barnacle, that Oswald Thorn. I opposed his magic. I opposed his marriage to my daughter and would have attacked Lion's Arch to get her back. What happened? The salty conniver kidnapped me. He threatened to kill me if Zola didn't marry him. This was referenced in Guild Wars 1. She believed him, as did I. So, and so to save my life, she agreed to be his queen. Did he kill you? No. Once they were married, he set me free, but the tables were turned. I could take no action against him because he had my daughter in his clutches until he tired of her. What do you mean? Oh, what? You bastard. He despawned. Now I have to spend candy to get him back right on the last click. Oh, you wanker. What? Oh, it's there. Okay. Why is... Wait, what? Subdue the mad realm creatures until the door closes. Wow, look at this. I'm actually happy that happened then. Did we get a donation? We did. Oh, you and all. You got the duck today. Did you watch the new Stranger Things season yet? No, I decided to rewatch season one. So I'm four episodes back through season one to remind myself of everything. And then uh, I'll get onto season two, hopefully as soon as possible. But trying to juggle like all these different games and, and TV and things is actually quite challenging. So, uh, it might be a while before I get to, um, season two. But, yeah, I I'm glad I rewatched it as well. Because there was a lot of stuff I'd forgotten. Uh, Hopper's so good, man. I wouldn't watch that show if Hopper wasn't in it. What an amazing character. Uh, so, yeah, I got, got four episodes done. See, Stranger Things is not that long, so I would recommend people watch it. I think it was a little bit overhyped, but overhyped doesn't mean bad. Because uh, it genuinely is a great show. Alright. Yeah, what happened? He, can I, he kidnapped you, then he got tired. I'll record your story. Shit, I missed the last... Well, whatever. There we go. Yay! I'm Wooden Potatoes, and here we care about lore. Uh, Mad Memories 10, Taxa Lanterns, in which the king makes an example of ungrateful peasants. So the landing at Arca struggles to fill its storeroom, so it will never start of again. Now, Arca Lake is a thing, isn't it? I, I know Arca Lake is a thing, I just don't remember where. Arca Lake is here. So I'm going to go up there. Didn't one of the actors get arrested recently for coke in an airport? <laughs> really? I don't know. It's a shame. I was... I hate hearing about actors having run-ins with the law. I, um... I recently got really into the thick of it. Uh, uh, a politics-based, um... Foul-languaged British show. Um, that if I was more, uh, politicized and interested in that side of the world d when, during its run, I'm sure I would have loved. 
Uh, but it deals with a lot of stuff um, that I wasn't really following very closely at the time. Anyway, I I've really been enjoying it. Really, really, really enjoying it. And uh, it's unfortunate because one of the one of the really good characters in the first season ended up going uh, going to jail because uh, it, it, oh god, this is dark, right? In the show, they even make a joke accusing him of uh, I don't know what we want to talk about. Basically, he did something really bad, and they joked about it in the show, and then the actor ended up genuinely being that. Or sort of, I don't know. Uh, and then got arrested and then they had to, like, write him out in the second season. That kind of stuff's horrible. Uh, sorry, anyway, what happened? Uh, he rounded up everyone with unpaid taxes and put pumpkins on the head instead of hoods and hanged them on the wall. The pumpkins rotted. Lovely, man. Uh, but yeah, The Thick of It's a great show as well. Um, uh, Eleven, Flames of Renewal. Green is the colour I want to remember, not the red of flames or the black and plateau. The bridge, even if it was, uh, even it was green. Green is the colour I want to remember. Not the red of flames or the blackened plateau. Blackened plateau. That'll be it. Yeah, basically they're doing that. The green Flynn plateau seems pretty likely. Are you talking about Scandal? No, no, no. I was talking about a show called The Thick of It. Did I see the film spin-off? Uh, no, but I am aware of it. And I've seen clips of it from YouTube. Make WP enable Monkas, Gaki, Blast, Clap, and Omgalol. I don't. None of those sound like things I'm remotely interested in enabling. All right. Uh, he burned them all. The whole village. They laughed and screamed, and he just laughed and laughed and laughed. Sob, but not you. He made me watch so I could tell this story to others. And finally, walking cadence with Kingthorn's shattered subjects. They keep their hatred deep within. Right now, just because I remember that that keep is one in Sparkfly, I'm going to guess that it's there. The shattered keep. The word shattered appeared. They're better TV, better Twitch TV emotes. Have you watched Mindhunter? Nope. That's pretty interesting though. I like the 10 episode uh, format for, for a lot of TV. Feels a lot more, you know, watchable. Getting through all of Deep Space Nine was very, very rewarding. But, um... Uh, oh, it's a lot of hours to get through stuff like that. You form a connection with characters in shows like that though that you don't anywhere, in any other way. Like that final shot in Deep Space Nine of Jack, uh, Jack, uh, Jake, Jesus, Jack, um, looking out, uh, at space, like, is so moving. And it wouldn't be if you didn't get so many hours with these characters. It's amazing. Solaris is putting space ports and stuff into the game in their upcoming update. And, uh, it's hilarious to see how many, st how, you know, a well understanding of one another, uh, sci fi fans seem to be. Like, everyone's just talking about they want a Quark's Bar module and they want, you know, that uh, their off-world company is going to be, uh, you know, trading in gold press latinum and this and this and this and this and this. It's amazing just the, the number of references that are so well understood by one another. Also, I'm, I was at the Trek location there, I think, and I guess that the uh, NPC is actually down here. Man, classic plasma, look at that. Beauty. We're looking for a suspicious... Oh, there you go. That's it there already. Oh, they're going to talk? Hello. <clears throat> it was as simple as killing a regular man. The king had powerful allies and magic of his own. 
He swore that he would return from the grave and make miserable his enemies. We all believed him. We murdered him from ambush, but we didn't stop there. We put his pieces in different boxes so that we could hide them without with obscuring spells. What did you do with those boxes? Each of us took a box to a secret location and we buried it deep. Uh, if he couldn't piece himself back together, then he couldn't return. Did it work? The spells that kept his body parts hidden are weakening under his strong magic and willpower. It has, after all, been 500 years since we cast them. Thanks. I'll make a record. And there we go. We get Mad Memories, that edition. And this year they added a new one as well, right? Uh, which gives us the complete ignition, right? So this stuff here, this is new. I've never done this before. And all of a sudden I'm much more interested in it too. Uh, because it gives us this. Which matches my outfit really well there. Oh, they added two, did they? So, I'm like well up for this. I'm really looking forward to this. This should be a lot of fun. Um, can you recommend for one to get Griffin? It's a bit disturbing to know. It might change the entire feel of the game in the future. Yeah, I... But that those two things aren't... For you as a player, those two things shouldn't be bound together. You, you kind of got no choice. Yes, you need to get the Griffin. Um, it's in the game now and like, there's no going back really. So yeah, I would get it and it's fun. You know, the adventures and stuff are fun. This one is a really bright light, kind of like a torch. Well, this one is like a, is like a torch too. It's interesting that this one might be, does it give you like a purple light? That would be really cool. Um, so we'll see. But guys, we've already been streaming for two hours, so I'm gonna have to leave this one here. But tomorrow, we'll get a lot of new Halloween stuff going, it seems then. And I'm pretty excited about that. That should seem very cool. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed, and we'll, uh, focus a bit more on the Halloween plot, I think, next time. Uh, and I'll sort of gear myself into it a bit more. Uh, there's so much I want to do in game at the moment. There's so, so, so much. Uh, but I guess we'll have to take it a piece at a time. Thanks to anybody who subbed today. I hope you guys enjoyed the giveaways. Um... Uh, oh, I've got other stuff to do. Christ. Uh, there is also... We're going to do the giveaway... We'll do this all tomorrow, I guess. Uh, can I just remind Spuds that we have um, uh, the Purge is coming. So make sure you've got your Spud rank. Make sure you play the guild missions. Make sure you do the stuff because we've got the Purge coming. All right? So remember that. Uh, also, we're going to do our next gem giveaway for people who have been using voice channels in Discord. So if you guys could remember as well, if you uh, want more gems, if you want even easier free stuff, just use our Discord for chatting with one another and hanging out with spuds. And you'll, you earn tickets constantly while you're in there. And we'll do our giveaway for that probably tomorrow. Soon. I was going to do that today, but it's pretty late now. So uh, we'll do that. Uh, Guildhall will update at the start of tomorrow's stream as well. So, there you go, guys. I think that should be everything. Thanks very much. I hope you all enjoyed some cool chat about uh, TV and stuff today. And I will see you very shortly. Catch you next time, guys.